Let's rank some Pokemon, shall we? You guys know what it is. Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is insane. Let's rank some Pokemon. All right, so for this one, we're going to do some Gen 4 focused, Platinum focused. Uh, but I'm also doing the Diamond and Pearl exclusive Pokemon, uh, which is these four here. I'm going to talk, I'll talk about them as well, uh, because there's no reason to leave them out. I'm not excluding the Legendaries. I'm also not going to talk about Pokemon that are not from Sinnoh. Uh, I'm only going to talk about Sinnoh and Pokemon because I'm going to try a new format for Tier. Let's try to speed these up, make them a little quicker so I can get more out and not have to talk for so long. And eventually, you know, I'll, I'll go through and cover like pretty much every single Pokemon. And I feel like talking about Sinnoh because I'm playing Platinum right now. And it's so fun and there's some great Pokemon and I got some thoughts. So let's go over it. I know I did a Tealist already, so this is going to be an updated Tealist of Platinum. And just the Sinnoh Pokemon, I'm just, I guess I'll just call it like, you know, Tealist Sinnoh. Not counting the, the box at Legendary. I will be counting... Azelf, uh, you can see in Mesprit though, because they're caught during your playthrough. They're not crazy overbearing. Well, not as much as like Dialga, Palkia, Gear, Giratina, or at least. So I'll, I'll go over them and we'll cover them as well. And there's not going to be like a ban list or anything here. I honestly don't even think there's a single Pokemon here that really needs to be banned. Um, at least how I play, the only Pokemon I ban when I play is like Gyarados. Snorlax and Blissey because I think they're just very uninteresting to, and make the gameplay very boring and bland. So let's start off with the starters. Torterra I think is is my personal favorite starter to use. It's not the best starter though, but it's still very solid A tier. Grass and ground, so good offensively. It's super bulky. Rock polish can patch its speed and it can turn into a sweeper. It learns curse very early on. All the starters in this game are really great. And Primeape. Did I just call it Primeape? Infernape is no exception to that. Infernape is really solid. Firefighting is amazing offensive uh, coverage. And when you have speed to back it up, it makes you a lot better than Blaziken. He's got a great move pool. Not as crazy. Not an S tier, I don't think. Because, you know, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you get Power Punch instead of Mach Punch. You only get Mach Punch in this generation. In, in this generation. And I don't think it's that crazy. I think I think I think we have power up punch and can boost yourself level 14. That's a little that's a little overbearing and that bumps them to S tier. But without that, I think it's near the top of A tier. Definitely the best starter. And fire types are still rare. Even in platinum, there's a couple more. They're still rare. And very good type of the region. So I think it's the best starter. And Poliana I think is the worst starter. Not that it I think it does the least impressive things offensively. Defensively, it's probably the best typing. But I think Torterra is also still fantastic defensively. It even gets like Leech Seed and stuff. So it could even outdo Empoleon defensively. There's just plenty of water types you're going to get. Even plenty of steel types you're going to get too. So it kind of the, the coverage you get. You kind of get both both types coverage and both type covered. So it's kind of the same place as Torterra. I think these two are about as good as each other. And they can switch, I guess. Um, but I think... Infernape is clearly the better is clearly the best starter, but they're all very solid A tier Pokemon. You get the bulky ones with a lot of coverage and flexible, and then you got Infernape who just kinda goes crazy. Star Raptor is fantastic. Intimidate, so good. It's got great stats. Being a three stage evolution that actually like gets good stats on like Pidgeot, which is really sad. Uh, close combat is ridiculous too a fire a flying type with fighting type coverage is, is absolutely ridiculous this thing just kind of carries your carries your game is super consistent encounter for you all the time Bidoof is here only if it has simple if it does not have simple i think it's a b tier possibly c tier but with simple and and the defense curl you get early game it's basically an iron defense and sure you know it growls or intimidates sharply lower in your attack but or harshly lower in attack i guess but uh, iron defense Basically, with Defense Curl and then you roll out is really, really strong. Eventually, you get Curse, you get Amnesia too, so you can just completely you raise your defense, your special defense by three stages with the Amnesia. It gets Swords Dance and like Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, which makes it even better. Most Pokemon just get better in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, just like a lot better because they have updated movesets, more things they can do. Um, but curse is ridiculous because essentially it's a it's an iron defense and a sword dance and then you lower your speed twice but you're not really fast anyways and that's just too crazy so that's why it's popping in the a tier Kirkatoon is an f tier doesn't really do anything for you it's like sing early on it's like a sack encounter and then turns into hms intimidates really fantastic and luxray is 
And it's a, it's a, it's an intimidating Pokemon. I think of Luxray kind of like how I think about Mightyena. It does a very simple job with Intimidate. It obviously is going to hit harder than Mightyena, but I don't think its typing is is as good to be defensive because it's kind of built to be somewhat of a defensive like heavy hitter. And I say defensive because of you know pivoting with Intimidate and stuff. I think a Pokemon like Mightyena with a dark typing, which is better defensively, is just overall better than Electric typing defensively, and make gives it. Gives Luxray kind of this awkward job of like, oh, I, you know, I want to, you want to pivot it with, with Intimidate, but it's also just an electric type that hits hard, so you want to use it in battle, like you just want to use it to fight things a lot, and it's also just slow, doesn't really get a great move, but it doesn't have like great electric stab for its attack, it's kind of just Thunder Fang and that's not very strong. Bite coverage is cool, I think it's a solid B tier Pokemon. Rosary's another solid B tier Pokemon, it's, a, it's like a guaranteed grass type, so it's kind of a reason to not pick Torterra Tor because you're going to get a Badoo at some point, unless you, you know, mess up. You can guarantee your Badoo at the early game. Roserade hits really hard. It's got some good speed on it too. Great special defense, but it's super, super frail physically. So you just have to be careful. And I don't think it has the best grass type moveset really. It's got some good moves of like Petal Dance, Magical Leaf. It gets uh, Le it still gets Leech Seed. Worry Seed can be pretty interesting. Giga Drain. It does get Grass Whistle, but having Sleep Powder would just make it so much better. And I think that really does hold it back. I mean, you have Stab Sludge Bomb, which is special now, which is great. You don't have Technician yet or anything. And I don't think it really does anything crazy special. It's a very solid Grass-type Pokemon. It's going to hit hard. But I think with just the overall power level of all of your encounters, I don't think it's really anything special. I don't think it does anything, you know, above and beyond. Rampardos is god-awful. It's way too weak, way too slow. Not not weak, way too frail, way, way too slow. This thing just dies before it can ever do anything, ever. But Bastiodon, Steel and Rock is really great pivoting typing, especially for early game with just Shield On. Really, Bastiodon doesn't really even do that much. It's just kind of Shield On. Metal Burst is great, though, for just tanking a hit and then, and then dealing a bunch of damage back. So you still can do damage. The real selling point is just having an early game Rock type, having an early game Steel type. You have both two in one. So you're quad re resisting things like normal and flying. You're resisting Ghost in this generation which is great, you just have a great pivot, you got great moves like Taunt, Swagger, Teach It Stealth Rock, Teach It Rock to him. Give it a great supportive moveset, great supportive pivot. I like it a lot. It's only C tier, you know, it's only C tier, but it's definitely not not too bad. You know, I thought about putting it in B tier, so. Wormadam, so this is surprising. I actually think this is this thing is a lot better than I initially thought. I think, specifically the, the Trash Cloak, there's no reason to evolve it into the grass, the leaf cloak what is it Le leaf cloak grass the grass type one or the ground type one just level up your burmy inside a building have it fight a trainer not not even not even level up in it just have it fight a trainer so it turns into the trash cloak the pink one the steel type evolve it into a bug steel type bug steel type is amazing typing it's actually really bulky it's got some decent moves too you get metal burst pretty quickly so you're gonna be doing a lot of damage sharply lowering special attack or special defense i mean you get Steel, steel stab you're gonna get some bug stab you get like psychic which is pretty cool actually not not, not a bad pokemon at all I really really like it i honestly like it the most of all the b tier pokemon thus far um but if it's a if it's a male burmy and wants to evolve into motham i don't really think motham does anything special nothing at all it's a very basic bug type you use it for a couple fights early and then it kind of just drifts away um but the same is not true for vespa queen vespa queen is a fantastic pokemon this thing evolves level 21, which is perfect because you're going to have it for Gardenia. All the level caps in Emerald or Platinum are pretty high. And with Heal Order coming very quickly, you can move Relearner for Defend Order. Attack Order is fantastic stab. When you evolve, you get Power Gem, which is crazy coverage for a bug type. Super bulky. Actually doing a lot of damage, both with physical attack and special attack. You're really slow, but you know, you're not supposed to be fast Pokemon. You're a wall. You're, you're, you're a wall that can dish, that can deal some great damage back and heal itself basically the entire time it exists. It gets toxic even. It's got some great moves. It's a really bulky Pokemon. Bug flying, you know, you're quad weak to rock. But outside of that, you're actually really well suited for the region. And it's a very consistent Pokemon. I really like this thing. As long as you don't get a male Burmy, it's pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, I'm also not going to rank male Burmy. Or male Combi, I guess. I said male... Yeah, male combi, not even on here, I don't think so. Not ranking it. Ignore that Pokemon, okay? If you get a, if you get a male combi, that's not an encounter. I don't even I don't even play with male combi anymore. If I get a male combi, I'm like, nah, I'm grabbing a female combi. 
I'm not doing it. Pachirisu, I hate to say it. I love this thing in Seijun Park and everything, but in this gener in Generation 4, it just does not have the moveset. Literally nothing it can really do. Just nothing. Like, there, there's nothing for it. Its stats do not work out. There's really just nothing for it. Although, I will say, with Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, this thing is a fantastic A tier. Fantastic A tier with things like when you get Nuzzle, you get Electro Balls, Zing Zap, you can set up screens. There's some there's some stuff. You know, you get once Pachirisu gets a moveset, it's fantastic. But sadly, Gen 4, which is the focus of this video, does not get anything. Very lackluster Pokemon. Floatzel is great. You know, a lot of speed, great attack, usable special attack too. It's a great offensive water type, and that's not a bad archetype to have. It's fast, got good moveset, you got good water stab too with Aqua Jet and Waterfall eventually. Ice Fang for physical ice coverage, which is cool. You could also just use Ice Beam, you know. It's got a nice, it's got a fine special attack stat. Crunch coverage is really cool. Brine is actually a really good move. And it can, it, since it's so fast, it can be an amazing, like, revenge killer or cleanup sweeper. It's a really solid Pokemon, a really solid water type, one you're likely to get. A lot of fun, such a cool design, too. Throw it around here. Cherum. You know, Cherum's kind of another grass type to me. I, I could throw it C tier, but I, the more I look at this thing, the more I don't hate it. Really, I think it's just the moveset, the level of moveset, learning Sunny Day. It's, so its ability grants itself and an ally. Uh, special defense and attack. I don't really know why it raises its attack instead of special attack, you know, or, or just attacking power. You know, I think that would be really cool. But making yourself more bulky, you make yourself, you can be a physical attacker, I guess. I don't know why you would. The giving your ally an attack would be pretty nice in, in like the few double battles that happen throughout the game. But really, just having Sunny Day and Solar Beam by level up is really crazy. You, you get solid pedal dance, you evolve level 25 which is pretty good i think you're just a very solid grass type too just like just like um rose red obviously rose red i think is a little better but cherum does the job of just a good a good move set grass type i don't really have anything to complain about it with i do like it i think it's pretty solid it might jump down to c tier you know it's it's, it's kind of bouncing through here gastrodon i really think is not as crazy as some other water ground types are. I think it's kind of bland in a sense. It doesn't get recovered till really late, which is like the big selling point of it. It doesn't do a lot of damage. You don't get Earthquake by level up, which the other two in this region or in this game do. Wish Cash and Quagsire both get Earthquake by level up. There's Earthquake TM, but you're not, you don't want to teach it to this thing. You want to teach it to something like Garchomp, a Gliscor, maybe your Torterra, something like that. You want to teach it to something else. So it's kind of eating up some TMs to be as useful as it is. I mean, Mud Bomb's fine. It's a it's a fine stab for a while. Once you get recover later, it's it's great. But I think I think it's just not as good as some of the other water ground types. Um, for example, if I you know if I was ranking the rest of these Pokemon, Quagsire would end up in the A tier, in my opinion at least. Ambipom, super solid with Technician. Great speed, great attack. And double hit, you're doing a lot of damage. You got last resort too, if you just want to do like double hit, last resort. Honestly, it's a great move set there. But I think the real selling point to this thing is the fact that it gets baton pass, agility, and nasty plot all by level up. And that is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. There's some, you, you, especially with Pokemon who have choice specs. If you pass an agility nasty plot, baton pass that to some to any special attacker with choice specs. And you instantly just made a monster. Depending on you know what Pokemon you pass, you can make a Pokemon like Mothman really scary now. And that is so good on. And even on it, besides just Baton passing, it's a great offensive Pokemon. It's on it on its own. You know, double hit, normal stab. You can get Silk Scarf at some point. It's gonna do a lot of damage. You get a pretty. You can evolve it. You know, 33 is actually a pretty good level cap for it too. It sets you up perfectly. Kind of right after you get it. You know, shortly after you get it. You'll be you'll be getting a, a fully evolved Pokemon. Really good stats. I really like it. Driftblim is a sad case. I don't think this thing is nearly as good as it looks. You look at it and it's like, okay, it's got some pretty good offenses. It's got decent speed. It's not nice HP. You know, bad defenses, but you know, whatever. It should be bulky with that HP. And look at his moveset. It's like, oh yeah, it got it gets stockpile, minimize, and it can baton pass that. That sounds super cool. But essentially, Driftblim just never really gets to 
do anything special. It, it feels like it's always lackluster, no matter how many times I've used it. It, it looks so cool on paper. I'll, I look at it, I'm like, okay, this thing's going to be a good Pokemon, right? Right? No, it doesn't. It's not bulky enough. It's not offensive enough. It just gets outshined by, like, every other ghost ever. Lepunny is fine. Lepunny is a fine Pokemon. Agility Baton Passing is always nice. You're not as good of a Baton Pass as, like, Ambipalm, you're not really as good of a normal type as Ambipalm, but Lapunny's fast, it's got some good bulk to it, doesn't really have the best offensive moveset, but Dizzy Punch is great, Jump Kick is a nice coverage as well, and you also get Mirror Coat and Magic Coat, which can reflect damage you've done off of, or you reflect damage, special attack damage, I guess, that's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> words are jumbling, and then um, Mirror Coat, or Magic Coat, sounds like it reflects Leech seed, leech seed, and, and reflect and things like Will O Wisp, which is pretty cool. So those are some cool moves. I think it's pretty all right. Throw it in the B tier. Can evolve pretty early. So these four Pokemon are not in Platinum. They are in Diamond, and then they're in Pearl. These two are in Diamond, and these two are in Pearl. Other way around. Sorry. These two are in Pearl. These two are in Diamond. I'm still gonna rank them just in case you're playing those games. I think these Pokemon they should be ranked. You know why not? And Miss Magus is pretty cool. Mischievous. No, this is Mage Magus. Yeah, Mischievous gets Pain Split, which is awesome. And you're essentially just a Gengar. You're like you're like a slightly worse Gengar with Pain Split, which is really really cool. Ghost typing is really solid. You're just a really good Pokemon. Great coverage. Yeah, Pain Split could be nuts. Pain Split. Pain Split can be really really nuts, especially in like Nuzlocke's. Because you can, if you're ever low HP, you can like bring this thing in. You're fast. You change your HP so now any scary tank Pokemon that came in on you. You're now full HP, basically, and they... Not full HP, but you're now healthy. They're not, and then you can probably take it out pretty well. Um, Perugly is not good. As, as hard as, Mara, as Mara's, Mars's Perugly is, and hard to fight, run killer E, I guess. When you get one, it evolves so late. It's so unimpressive of a Pokemon. It's, like, fast, but does not do damage. It's very frail. doesn't have, like, crazy... I think it's, like, Slash, I guess. Like, whatever. This Pokemon is super lackluster, whatever. Honestly, I can I could put it in the F tier, and I think I will. Just, I think it's such a lackluster, boring, not good Pokemon. Now onto the Diamond exclusives. Honchkrow is a borderline A to B tier Pokemon. It can do so much damage. Super Luck is crazy. Dark, Dark and Flying is really good typing. Super Luck can just be clutch, especially with Night Slash and the high crit rate. If you can ever grab us like a Scope Lens on it. Or I think the Razor Claw can also give you crit, if I'm not mistaken. So you get, get a crit item on this thing, and oh my gosh, it can do so much damage. Really high attack, especially if you have Roost, which helps patch up its you know its squishiness. So if it takes some damage, at least it can Roost. It's not very fast, but Murkrow can get Sucker Punch too, and a Super Lock Sucker Punch can be pretty crazy. I think this thing's damage output and good typing just puts it into the A tier. And Skunk Tank... It's not too bad. I think Skunk Tank is actually really cool, purely because it has Stench. It essentially has a built-in King's Rock, and if it ever makes contact with like a physical move or contact move, there is a chance for it to flinch. And that's crazy with like Night Slash that can crit you or flinch you and stab and other other moves like that. Even just like Scratch when you first get a Stunky, it's pretty crazy. And I think that alone, plus you only have one weakness, which is awesome. If you have one weakness, you're great pivoted. You're not very tanky, but just your ty your typing alone makes you a very solid pivot. It's a decent offensive Pokemon, both the special attack and physical attack. Learns flamethrower, which is pretty neat. I think this thing's pretty solid. I wouldn't put an A tier, but I do like it near the top of B tier. Bronzong. This thing is very close to S tier to me. It's very very close, but I am gonna leave it in the A in the A tier. Early Steel type, you're so bulky. Extra Sensory is amazing stab coverage for you. You get Gyro Ball later. You learn both Rain Dance and Sunny Day by level by Move Learner, which is crazy to me. I think it's so interesting. You can basically have this thing be the glue to any kind of team you want to build. You want to build a Rain Team? Hey, guess what? This thing learns Rain Dance. You want to build a Sun Team? Hey, guess what? This thing learns Sunny Day. You need Trick Room mode? Guess what? He learns Trick Room. It can deal some good damage with Gyro Ball. It can deal some good damage with Extra Sensory. There's other things you can do. It can be used for screens. Its typing is fantastic. Only weak to fire or ground. Depending on which build you have, you get rid of one of those weaknesses. Levitate's clearly better, but 
So many resistances. This thing's a bit like a defensive behemoth. It probably goes in the top of A tier. Chatot is a lot better than I thought it would be. You know, 95 special attack, not bad. And Chatter is very good flying stab. You give this thing a sky plate, and all you kind of do is just click, click Chatter, and then you're doing some good damage. It also has some nice support moves like Taunt, um, Sing, Mirror Move, Slash Mimic. Pretty cool. It gets Feather Dance later. It's pretty fast, too. It's a nice offensive, you know, special attacking flying type. Nothing really wrong with it. I don't don't think it's, you know, fantastic or, or, or blowing my mind or anything, but I do like it. I think it, it can do some good damage output, especially on t when you don't have a Star Raptor. Yeah, when it's still Star Ravia, you know, Chat Thought's gonna, like, once you get it, it can it can do some good work for a while. Spirit Tomb is the first Pokemon to break into S tier. You have no weaknesses, we, no weaknesses at this point. Pressure is a pretty useful ability for PP stalling and just getting rid of scary moves out of low H, that low PP, like Giga Drain, for example, and has five, so they can only use it like twice on you, three times on you. You also set up with Nasty Plot and have Stab Shadow Ball or Stab Dark Pulse, which is absolutely crazy. Such a good move set on this thing. Easily S tier to me. It's a guaranteed Pokemon, no weaknesses, very bulky, can do a lot of damage and set up and do even more damage. Absolute S tier Pokemon. Garchomp is actually not S tier. That's because it's late evolution. You really can only use it for the Elite Four and the last gym as a Garchomp. Otherwise, you're stuck with Gabite. And I don't think Gabite is that amazing. I think it balances out into A tier. I think Gabite on its own is maybe the bottom of A tier, more like a B tier Pokemon. But Garchomp, when it's a Garchomp, is clearly S tier. Although your Garchomp and Cynthia's Garchomp, honestly, Cynthia's Garchomp is probably going to beat yours just because she's probably better IV'd and better natured and stuff like that than you are. Um, unless you're really like EV grinding, but I don't really consider that for my tier lists. But if you want to use Garchomp, you know, I, think it's, I think it's solid. Good Bite's not crazy. You do get Dragon Claw eventually, so it's got some nice stab. You get Dig, you can teach it Dig, you can teach it Earthquake. It's a Garchomp, so it's still gonna be crazy, but I don't think it's I don't think it's quite S tier. I don't think it's quite S tier, you know. Throw it right here. Lucario. It's kind of the same thing as as, as Garchomp. Anyway, it's a it's offensive behemoth. It's it's fast, it can do a ton of damage. It can learn swords dance by level up and can do swords dance extreme speed, which is crazy. Close Combat is a fantastic stab move. You can even teach it something like Earthquake, Bone Rush is great coverage. What else do you got? Yeah, like things like Metal Claw. Can, it's got a lot of coverage moves it can learn. Ice Punch. It's a really strong Pokemon. It Once you get it, it basically takes care of those two gems. You can get it for Byron and, and uh, the Ice Gym Leader. I don't know the Ice Gym Leader's name. You guys should remind me what the Ice Gym Leader and Sinnoh's name is in uh, the comments below because it escaped me at the moment. But Lucario takes care of those, can set up, can be really, really crazy, really powerful. And typing is really cool too. Hippowdon is an amazing defensive pit. Uh, so Hippowdon, honestly, I considered it S tier because it changes the way you play and the way you build your team once you get it. It's always going to have Sandstream, so you set up weather, so you want to build your team around this Pokemon, and it, it plays into some fantastic Pokemon, so... Either one of these starters, Garchomp, Lucario, Bronzong, your water ground types you might have gotten, your your rock types. I don't think you get this special defense boost from sand yet, but still just that chip damage is very nice. This thing has got yawn, so it's very tanky and it has yawn, so it's, it can be a pivot, put something to sleep, switch out. It also can get a ton of coverage. Obviously, Earthquake is so good. Crunch, Elemental Fangs, Ice Fang, Fire Fang, Thunder Fang. All of that. Rock Slide is great coverage. Just Earthquake, Rock Slide, Yawn, Crunch. You're looking good. It's it's a super strong Pokemon. Really bulky. Shapes your team in, in amazing ways. Yawn. Why does it have Yawn? So it could be a support Pokemon too. Absolutely crazy Pokemon. Drapion is another really good Pokemon. Purely because of Battle Armor. If you have Sniper too, Sniper's not too bad. But this Pokemon has only one weakness, which is Ground. Which is very easy to play around, just have a flying type on your team, and you can easily pivot into any ground type attack with your flying type and get that in thing in for free. And if it's a Star Raptor, then you get an Intimidate off, so there you go. It can learn some decent coverage. Poison, Dark, Bug coverage, it can learn Swords Dance. It's got great speed. 
Good speed, great speed, great bulk, good attack. It, it's just a very good Pokemon all around. Only one weakness. There's there's so many things good about it. Easily an A tier to me. Toxicroak is not quite that amazing. It's an okay Pokemon. I think Dry Skin bumps it into B tier. Because without Dry Skin, I think it's honestly a C tier. I don't think it's that crazy. It's horrible against Elite Four. Typing wise, just gets completely obliterated. You know, Poison Fighting's unique typing. It sounds cool. Its stats just aren't a, aren't as good as it should be. You know, its attack is good, but it's not quite as fast as you'd hope it to be. It does have nasty plots, so it can kind of set up and do more damage, especially. But I feel like it'd be better if it just learns Swords Dance by level up. And you know, I don't want to account for teaching everybody Swords Dance for their viability, because you can teach Swords Dance to anything and make it strong. You know. So I'm not going to worry about, you know, if you can teach a TM, the Swords Dance TM do it. If, it. if it learns Swords Dance, you know, I think that's a different story. Carnivine is overkill because Levitate on a Grass type is, is just so pointless. You already resist ground. Why do you need to be immune to it if you're just pure Grass type too? But it's a fine Grass type. Ring Out can do some good damage. Power Whip. It's, it's a fine grass type. It's it's a C tier. I think it's there's nothing wrong with it, really. It's just kind of overkill. I don't think it's like as, it's as good as, like, Cherim, even. I might pull Cherim down, honestly. I'm going to pull Cherim down to C tier. I think that's right. Uh, Luminion is like Love Disc, but slightly better, which is not good. <laughs> this thing just doesn't really do anything. It's so weak. Obama Snow, I considered for S tier as well. I think this thing also changed... <clears throat> Excuse me. Also changes how you play the game. Ice Grass is really good offensively. Sure, you had quad weakness to fire, and but it's still got some bulk to it. It's you know it's slow, sure, but with Snow Warning you have perfect accuracy. Accuracy stab blizzards off of a good attacking stat. You've got Grass coverage. You can learn Earthquake. It's got a good physical attack too, so you can use like Ice Shard to patch up your speed. This thing's really solid. It's a really good Pokemon. It it takes care of the end game. And you can build a team around if you want to do a hail team. Even just have a hail mode with either itself or another ice type that can just spam Blizzard. I don't think Weavile is quite as amazing, but I do think it's it's a great Pokemon. One that attack stat, and that speed stat is nothing to scoff at. It's a really good dark type. It's not quite as good of a, a ice type because it doesn't have an ice type move. Unless you leave it as a Sneasel for a while and it gets Ice Shard, but Ice Shard's kind of pointless because you're already so fast. So you're gonna have to move, tutor it, Ice Punch or something, and I gotta take some points off of that. I think not having a good Ice Attack is not very good. But I mean, just being a Dark type, it's a very solid Dark type. So I gotta put it around Honchkrow. It could do some great damage, and it's super fast. All right, let's take a look at the Spirits. So Yuxi. Yeah, Yuxi is crazy bulky. Has a very solid move, like learn, not learn set, but move. Um, I guess like TM learn. Like you can you can teach a ton of TMs, so it can be defensive. It's so it can be offensive. It's a crazy pivot. It's basically a Bronzong. It's like a non-steel type Bronzong. So I'm gonna put it at the top of a right next to Bronzong. Mesprit I don't think is that good. I. Just the stats of being 105, basically, and everything is good, but not, like, fantastic good. I still think it's A tier. I'm going to pull it down to the bottom of A tier. And Azelf, super fast, super offensive, complete behemoth offensively. And there's so much coverage it can learn. Stab, you know, Psychic with Ice Beam or Thunderbolt or Energy Ball coverage. All the stuff it can learn. It's so, it's so strong. You guarantee it. Yeah, this thing easily S tier to me. I didn't know if I wanted to count mana or not, but uh, it gets tail glow, <laughs> it gets tail glow, it gets acid armor, aqua ring. Yeah, this thing would be S tier. So I would like I probably would never use it. I don't really know how to use it or how to get it. I guess Fiona's not on here, but Fiona's like F tier. But yeah, mana fee would be an S tier for sure. Rotom. So this does not count the forms. You can't actually get the forms until post game of, of Platinum. And they're all still electric ghost type. Obviously, they're going to make Rotom better. But I think Rotom is just a very solid B-tier Pokemon. It's an electric type with Levitate, which is awesome. You're ghost type too. So you've got a, a ground immunity, fighting immunity, normal immunity. So it's really good for, for switch-ins. And it's a nice offensive electric type, you know. 
it nothing wrong with it stab stab electric stab ghost is really good offensive typing i could throw it in a tier if its stats were a little better its stats just are not quite there it's not like super fast it's not like super strong it's just like serviceable it's like chat hot stat wise honestly with just really good typing so i'm gonna throw it near the top of b tier do like it a lot you can guarantee it too which is really cool glyscore this guy is hopping into s tier with swords dance hyper cutter give this thing your earthquake tm absolutely give it your earthquake tm faint attack and x's are still good moves it learns u-turn by level up too which is awesome give this thing aerial ace if you want to this thing is a setup behemoth this typing is crazy ground flying so good typing you're so bulky you can do so much damage you're fast too swords dance setup i usually build this thing i give it swords dance i give it roost too i teach it roost and i teach it substitute and i just only use earthquake as an attacking move you know maybe sometimes i, I sab out a substitute for x scissor or aerial ace or something like that but this thing is so good you get it really early too you can get it by maylene i want to say i want to say you can get it by maylene pretty pretty early and it's it's a monster absolute monster easily an s tier pro pass is one i've been excited to talk about actually i really like pro pass i think it is an a tier pro, mm, no i think it's i think it's near the top of b tier if you get nose pass in the vault then level it up in mount corn that where you find nose pass it turns into a steel type and this thing's moveset's really cool. It's actually got good special attacks, so it can be, it can deal out damage without having to take a bunch of damage back. So it's already better than than uh, Bastiodon. It's about as tanky, if not tankier. It's basically about as tanky. You know, Rock Steel is not great, but I think just this thing early game is really really helpful if you can get it at that time. It comes with a great moveset too. It learns Thunder Wave by Fantina, I know. Teach it Taunt, teach it Stealth Rock, teach it Rock Tomb. It'll have Rock Throw. Teach it Rock Smash if you want to. This thing's just very great early game pivot. Super bulky. That All those stats and that typing and that early game Steel type and early game Rock type is so good. Definitely a B tier. It definitely falls off later on, but really, really solid Pokemon. Um, Glade's kind of like a, like a Gliscor situation just having swords dance by level up good spe good phys good special bulk really high physical attack decent speed tier you know not super fast but not really slow either psycho cuts great stab for it teaches something like drain punch with swords dance and it'll, it'll be performing really well and get slashed too this thing's a really strong pokemon can set up and sweep and i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it right next to lucario i think it's i think it's some something like that you can get it pretty early too Lick it, licky licky this thing is surprisingly pretty good i'm not sure if i want to put it b tier or a tier the whole reason i have it in a tier so it's bulky it's pretty well rounded it's, it's pretty good bulky pretty pretty good bulk it's got some pretty decent offensive stats but the real seller is me first so me first copies the move that the opponent's about to use you use it first so it patches up his speed and it, you use it, use that move, but you also use it to more power. So you don't have to like, stab on it, but you kind of match the stab with just the, the me, me first boost, like power boost that it gives you, and you also just attack first. So it's kind of niche and depends on what fight you're fighting, but let's say you're fighting against Byron and his Steelix, and his Steelix goes for Earthquake. You hit me first, and you get the Earthquake off and hit some super effective. Or let's say you're fighting the Ice Gym Leader, whose name still eludes me you know let's say her let's say her obama snow's going for blizzard you hit click me first and your blizzard comes out first and it hits the obama snow for super hard and doesn't miss and maybe you get the freeze off you know i think me first is crazy it can also just learn some some very nice coverage moves it gives like power whip ring out can do some good damage i think it's things actually not bad at all i don't know about a tier i say a tier pretty loosely it could definitely be b tier but this thing's actually pretty underrated once you evolve it like a tongue sucks but once you evolve it, it's pretty good leafeon leafeon this thing is held back so hard by not having a good craftsman you don't get leaf blade till level 70 which is not available in the main game it's basically just razor leaf and non-stab attacks and i think that's just so sad it's really it, 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 it should be good it should be it's, it's like a consistent bulky Pokemon, which is cool. So I definitely throw it at the top of C tier. I could almost put it in B tier. 
almost could. I guess I'll still leave. I guess I'll still leave it in B tier. Stats are too good to, to be less than B tier. But uh, not having any moves is so sad. But you can get you can get Leafy on super super early. Glaceon is also in B tier. You do actually have moves like teach this thing Blizzard. It's really bulky and has amazing special attack. But it is still nice type. So like you're bulky but you're nice type. So good luck. That sucks. And you don't get it till super late. Nothing really impressive. Don't don't evolve your Eevee into this either one of these things. Evolve your Eevee into like Jolteon or Umbreon. I'm telling you now. Togekiss, I'm not gonna explain Togekiss. But even if you're hustle, just this thing is ridiculous. So bulky, so such good coverage, so offensively powerful. Why? Why? Togekiss is a Pokemon I could actually consider banning, but it is fun to use, honestly. It's very fun to use. Magnezone, it's Magneton. Magnezone's kind of just as good as Magneton is in most other games, but I feel like Magneton in, in other games is is so strong and it's above the power level of the, of the general Pokemon. Well, I think Magnezone is right at the power level of the of these strong Pokemon. Great typing, great offensive capabilities. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with it. I'll throw it right next to Empoleon just to get the Steel types together, I guess. Not like bronze song level steel type, but it's solid. Tangrowth, I actually really like Tangrowth. Tangrowth's kind of more of your typical grass type, because it has sleep power. It also has core fill to patch up its speed. It does have really bad special defense, but it has really good special attack, really good physical attack, and really good physical defense. So it's really bulky, and it's your classic grass type. You can use it physically or specially, which is cool. You can, you can use it mixed. It can get some decent coverage, nothing crazy. Like, the teacher's earthquake. You teach your earthquake if you want. That's kind of cool, but I do like this thing a lot. I think it's a it's a very solid grass type Pokemon, and uh, chlorophyll patching its speed makes it really good in some teams. Yen Mega was I I overhyped it in the first tier list. It's it still has potential to do a lot of damage. Its special attack is high, and it could have speed boost or tinted lens. Honestly, tinted lens is not that amazing. I guess it's like good for if you have choice specs but speed boost is far and above better but the real thing about it is you don't really have good moves until very late so it's like almost like guard chomp like i don't think it's really as useful until late game and like the end of the game which i think is really sad you just don't have moves and you're really you're really frail and you're fast even without speed boost but speed boost so you can you can be really crazy but it takes a while to set it up just because it, you know, it doesn't get moves for a while, which is really sad. Rhyperior, solid rock, making it just ignore quad weaknesses, basically. Those stats speak for themselves. Man, this, this thing is so strong. So, so, so strong. I'll throw it around here. So strong. And, and rock polish, too, patching its speed. Oh, boy. I wish weakness policy was in, was in this game. Dusk... Dusknoir. Just Dusclops itself. It's so bulky. You can do a lot of residual damage with Curse, Will-O-Wisp, Confuse Ray, and when you evolve it into Dusknoir, you're a little bit bulkier, and you also have a decent attack stat, so now your Shadow Sneaks, Paybacks, Shadow Punch, moves, you want to use Elemental Coverage Punch moves, like Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, all usable. Really good. I really, really love this Pokemon. I'm going to throw it around with Magis. Mages. I'm going to throw these guys actually up here. I think they're really fantastic. Really, really good pivot Pokemon because of its typing, because of its bulk. Yeah, fantastic Pokemon. Really love this thing. Porygon Z is a god killer. This thing is ridiculous. So you either have adaptability or download. And download raises either your attack or special attack depending on the enemy's lower defensive stats. So if there's something like a Gallade, who has high special defense but low defense, you're going to get attack raised. But if there's something like Tangela, or Tangrowth, who has high defense, low special defense, you're going to get a special attack boost. Um, or you have adaptability. And adaptability, choice, or silk scarf, or choice specs, try attack with the coverage it gets. It gets recover, it gets agility to make itself faster, it gets nasty plot. All the coverage this thing can have. This thing can do ludicrous amounts of damage ludicrous amounts of damage and i considered putting it in s tier but you cannot evolve it into porygon z to a little while you have to go into the team galactic hideout in veilstone which you don't get to do that till i think after candace honestly 
Lee, oh, I said her name. Oh no, you guys are gonna roast me. Uh, I can't believe I said it. But um, Porygon 2 is so fantastic, and Porygon Z is just so destructive. So destructive, it's amazing. Electivire is in the B tier because you get it so late, and I think that holds it back really hard. Because electric typing isn't, you know, the most amazing for the Elite Four, and against Volkner, you know, it's good. I mean, you have motor drive, you get hit, you switch into electric type, you take like a water type or a flying type pivot to lead, you switch them, you switch them out on electric type attack, pull in electivire who gets the speed boost and now outspeeds, resists most of the gym and can fire back with something like earthquake. You know, it's a good strategy there. It's a strong Pokemon, but its typing and its joint time just don't really do it much favors. I gotta put it in the B tier. If it came earlier, you know, it could probably be an A tier Pokemon, but it just doesn't. Magmortar, though, does go in the A tier. Fire typing is great. It comes at a perfect time, too, right for the Steel Gym and the Ice Gym. And this thing is pretty fast. Got some decent bulk to it. Hits super hard. A fire type with psychic and electric coverage is actually really, really cool. And it's just a, it's a super destructive Pokemon. Gotta throw it here. Just leave it around. Well, let's just plop it right there. Let's plop it right there. That sounds good. Mamoswine is a Weavile case. This thing would be S tier if it had better uh, better physical Ice Stab. The best thing you've got is Ice Fang and that really holds it back. But Ice and Ground coverage and this thing's massive attack stat and pretty good bulk is something to worry about. So I'm going to put it here with Weavile. Very strong Pokemon. Really good for the end game, um, but is held back by lack of great stab. Honestly, you might run a want to run Avalanche on it and just let it take a hit so you can get the boosted power from Avalanche, basically retaliating. And then Frostlass, I think is like Rotom. It's kind of the case of, it's, it's really fast, but it doesn't deal a lot of damage. It's got a fine move pool. It's kind of the case of like, they're both, it's an electric type and an ice type that has the ghost typing, so it gets rid of a weakness in the case of Frostlass, and Rotom gets rid of a weakness because of Levitate. And having Stab Ghost is so Stab Ghost Shadow Ball is really good offensively, and then Ice Beam and or Ice and Electric are so good offensively as well. So they're really good offensively. Offensive typings and Ghost gives them something to do defensively, but their stats just are not that crazy. So I got to put them together. I think they're very similar Pokemon. And that is the list. I don't really think I would change anything around. I'm going to pull up Wormadam, actually. I think Wormadam is one of the better Pokemon up here for sure. I'm going to throw Floatzel up here as well. I think Skunk Tank could be pretty crazy. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think this, I think Platinum is a very top-heavy game. As you can tell, most of the Pokemon, the, big, the biggest list is, is the A tier. There are some crazy crazy strong Pokemon um, but the game challenges you back because the trainers have really good teams and random trainers are, are hard to fight like random trainers are harder fights than gym fights which is kind of funny anyways that's gonna do it for the video guys thanks for tuning in love y'all I will be editing my videos soon so stay tuned for that anyways take care guys peace